My name's Dale Little. It's uh, 21 degrees here this morning in Cisnady, Romania. Um, I have a, a temporary stay here at uh, Finding Hope Ministries. We are so thankful for uh, Nathan and Uncle Merrill for uh, putting us up here for a while we find a place. And here's our uh, little friend, um, Elise. He's heard me out here this morning. Uh, all excited. Um, but I want to talk to you this morning just real quick. Um, that's something I've been seeing on uh, social media, especially Facebook. Uh, the Bible instructs God's people to pray always, ask Christians to pray about most any situation these days. Uh, what one is likely to get are a variety of cliches um, and um, Bible verses uh, rather than prayer. And the truth is that, um, you know, those are easier to do than prayer. Prayer, real prayer, um, getting in touch with God, or, uh, Regardless of what some people say, it's, it's not always easy. Um, the Bible talks about uh, praying with fervency. Uh, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, so it's uh, much easier just to give a quick cliche or a Bible verse when uh, someone asks for prayer rather than actually praying for them. Um, you know, some of the more, more popular ones going around right now that uh, you hear all the time, well, God's got this. God's in control. Um, what, God's got this. What, what exactly does that mean? Um, I, you know, in the, the particular situation that person may be in, I know what it means generally speaking. You know, God, just like the other one, is in control of what's going on. Um, and he knows everything that's going on, knows right where we're at. Uh, that's good. But um, I'm afraid that for many people, what that means is that they're not about to enter into your situation. They're not about to enter in your pain or even pray, let alone pray with any fervency. Um, now, that is not to say that the case, that's the case with everyone who uses such a cliches, but I'm afraid that for most it is. Uh, the Bible says, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. That's another one that... Uh, uh, we hear, uh, and that's the Word of God. Uh, don't dispute that. But try telling that to the martyr whose head is about to be removed uh, by ISIS or some um, terrorist or something. Uh, yes, it is the Word of God, as I said, but let's not use God's Word so flippantly. Uh, if someone asks for prayer, then God has chosen you basically to be a vessel through which he works. He doesn't need our prayers, and he does not need us. He has chosen us to allow us the awesome privilege to be a part of his work through prayer. Um, and let me just go out on a limb here, and yet it's not a limb because I've got scripture to back it up. Without prayer, maybe God doesn't have this, uh, this particular situation that you're referring to or that someone else is referring to. Um, Look at Mark chapter 9. A man brought his young son to Jesus because his disciples could not cast out an evil spirit. Now, Jesus didn't say, well, I've got this now, or he didn't quote some verse. Um, and when the disciples uh, later had opportunity, here's what they had in verses 28 and 29. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast them out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. It didn't come out because someone quoted a verse and, or someone gave the cliche, Well, God's got this. Um, that didn't do anything. And that wouldn't do anything. But what did the job was Jesus said, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. In other words, God has given us a holy privilege to be a part of his work, and part of that work is in prayer. And when he gives us the opportunity, when someone asks you to pray, 
God has given you the privilege to be a part of that work. And that work is going to proceed because of someone's prayer. God has laid it on someone's heart to pray for a situation. And without it, unless someone comes through, but he's always got someone. Someone will. If you don't, someone else will. But why shun that? Not only responsibility, but uh, the um, awesome responsibility to pray and be a part of God's work. So it may be that God has uh, only got this because someone prayed or even fasted in a situation. So instead of uh, just offering some flippant prayer, or not prayer, but a flippant cliche, or some flippant uh, scripture, um, and, uh, you know, I know, that, don't get me wrong, I know people are well-meaning. And uh, again, I want to state that, and make it clear that not everyone who uses these and says these verses uh, are not going to pray. I, I probably will step out on a limb and say that probably most people that use them may not. Uh, but, you know, I'm not the judge of who does and who doesn't. But I'm just asking you, if you will, be a part. Don't just be a flippant, give a flippant response to a serious, someone that's really suffering. Someone is facing a serious situation or someone that's uh, uh, sick uh, and needing prayer. Why not go ahead and pray instead of uh, just giving a word of in, what you see as being a word of encouragement that may or may not be to them because what they need is prayer. Dale Little, Rescue America Ministries. Thank you.